impossible for me to take things that are abstract or that are diffused and make something that can focus them. And what I try to do is share with you, uh, you know, the whole meaning of this and what, what I think can happen, etc. So, the temperature reading. Give you first the history of it. For a long time, I used to take families up into the wilderness. Oh, there would be like 120 people, and we would stay for two weeks. And in the wilderness, um, there is, this was high in the Sierras, and there were all kinds of booby traps around for kids, uh, you know, if they aren't careful, and people wander out in the forest, and uh, they go by themselves, and they follow a little squirrel, and they do little things, climb up in a tree and can't get down, and all kinds of marvelous things like that. So I was wrestling with the idea of how, oh, there was one other thing, too. And that was that I wanted to neutralize the fact that there was something special, negative, about somebody who got angry or that felt helpless. And so I, um, I decided I would work out a tool where we universalize human feelings as well. <coughs> that was a temperature reading. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't know what my throat this morning. But anyway, so a little kid, what we had was a... Um, one little boy had stuck some, had mutilated a little animal. And it was a painful sight. And the whole group was you know, up in arms about this, this little boy. So I soon saw that what was happening was a polarization. And this little boy was going on trial. And I wasn't going to have that happen. And I realized that he was responding to feelings of anxiety and all the rest of it. So I called a caucus with the children. The children are always much, very helpful. And I said, how can we work at this? And so one little kid came up and she said, why don't you ask about the warm thank you, the warm fuzzies that people have for each other? I thought, that's a wonderful idea. So we had the warm fuzzies. Thank you very much, Jen. <coughs> now warm fuzzies, is kid and human talk for the things I like about you. You notice how I put that. So we started out with warm fuzzies. Warm fuzzies have translated themselves into appreciations. Warm fuzzies have translated themselves Thank you. Into appreciations. I began, as I often do then, is to look at what does this say about the universe? Then I realized there are very few people who <coughs> run around the world and say, I appreciate this about you. I appreciate that about you. They don't do that. But what they are very happy to do, quote unquote, is, what's wrong with you? That's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. You notice how in grading, they never say what's right. <laughs> they always say what's wrong. And I realized that we were building reinforcement of a negative universe. And that there were plenty of appreciations around. They just were kept to themselves. I mean, parents would have children all the time. My father used to tell the neighbors how wonderful I was, and I didn't find out that after he died how much he thought about me. And the neighbors told me. So appreciations. I appreciate. Now, it turns out that appreciations are also for the self. We'll get into that in a minute. Well, now, once having been aware that here was a way to validate the presence of something, you didn't create anything, just to validate it. Then it became clear that the next thing that we had were, were all of the, the negatives, <coughs> which came out into uh, irritations, resentments, and so on. So the next category was irritations or, as we affectionately refer to them, bugs. And bugs covered the things that worried you about somebody, and they covered the things that you were upset about. Now, of course, what that has gotten into are the things that need to be aired, that can then be uh, reformed or transformed that have happened. Now, for instance, in any group, there are bound to be bugs. Not because there are bad people in it, but simply because we're unique and we run into differences with people. So bugs are also related to differences. 
Now it turns out that in a group, that when there isn't room for the, for the articulation of differentness, then people hold it for themselves. But when you've got a differentness, it's not that easy to behave as though you don't have it. You know what I'm saying? And so that negative energy is sending itself out. That's what all the group therapists used to know, except in my opinion at this point with what I know, they, told, they thought that was pathological. I don't think it's pathological at all. It's natural and human. We just need an avenue for it. Because I could make up an old saying right on the spot that whatever differentness there is, that there is no way that it can be articulated. It has Hostility has to come out of it, inner or outer. Well, these were two wonderful things. Then the next thing I realized is that how could it be in a group and then everybody would know everything that was going on. They couldn't, so that there would be puzzles. Now I realized that puzzles were something that adults should never admit to. Because puzzles mean I don't know. And of course, for adults, they should know. You all know that. And I don't know, and it wasn't a good thing to say that. Well, when you have a puzzle and you don't know it and you make it up, the chances are very good that you make up something that's not that helpful. So. <laughs> Puzzles were the I don't knows. <clears throat> now there's another thing that was here that somebody would say they have a puzzle and somebody else would say, listen, we talked about that yesterday. And a group would say that. And uh, then I'd say, well, are we always 100% alert to everything that's going on? I know some people who sleep through a whole lot of things. <laughs> or that when the most important instructions are going on, um, somebody's mind is someplace else. There's no guarantee that you hear what I say. And that isn't because you're bad. That's because we're human. We move different places. What if you're sitting on a nail? Well, I'm giving you a, a, an instruction. <coughs> Where is that water? There it is. <coughs> so uh, puzzles began to be badges of courage. And a statement of I don't know was like another celebration. Hey, here's another human being. Wonderful. <coughs> and then we had a chance to, be, to clarify things, and within this frame, we had a chance to minimize gossip, assumptions, all kinds of stuff. And wonderful things happened because we had children there from all ages, in utero on up. And they asked the most interesting questions. Uh, that they were always the first to do that, and the adults would catch on. <laughs> now then, the next part of it was that we had new information. You see, there you eat, and you sleep, and you do this, and you do that, and you run to the toilet, and away from the toilet, and all kinds of stuff. And in a group, everybody has some pieces of the information. And so, a lot of times you come to something, or you want to put something new in. I remember, <coughs> I remember that one time, in one of the groups, we wanted to build, some group wanted to build a raft. And to build a raft, see, we built everything from scratch in the wilderness. We took stuff up on six horses, and then we built all the rest that we needed. So this group wanted to build a raft. So they came to me, and they said, we'd like to build a raft. And I said, but we don't think we got enough people. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, temperature reading tomorrow. Ask, say what you want, and then um, say, ask for people to be helpful to you if they want to. So I devised the means, then, for people to put in their new information. And that even if people didn't want to, they would know what was going on. Another time, there was a group of young uh, of adolescents. They're always young. And uh, they wanted to serenade us to wake us up in the morning. They all played guitars. And uh, so they, they, they wondered how we would feel about that. Well, some people thought it was wonderful and some not. So we had to work out a whole way in which the music wouldn't reach the ears of those who didn't want to. There are all kinds of creative things that happened. New information, or we're going to have another set of horses coming up this week. And who, um, and so we need to have somebody to help us load or unload whatever we were going to do. New information, whatever is there. Then the second, the last part, the second part, not that, were my hopes and wishes for today. For today. Or maybe this minute. Tomorrow, long term, and the 
is these are the now wishes. Okay. And if obviously, when you have a limited time, what you can do with long-term wishes is to set the foundations of that. And the now ones, you can see, okay, let's see what we can do about those now. And the idea here was that we will use our energy to make as many hopes and wishes come true as possible. That we will, we will, we will look at everything and see what's possible. To give a model that most of the things that people want, they can have. However, the usual model was, well, now let's see. I think that probably won't work. Well, what would you get if you got it? Do any of you know that little story? That's called being safe or some funny thing like that. So I developed this, and it's called now the temperature reading. And I use that name because it's like learning about what are the degrees somewhere, looking at your temperature and figuring out what kind of clothes should I wear. Or that, and a temperature can include barometer readings and so on. This has become very popular in the world. Uh, it's becoming more and more popular in schools, and what I get is that um, behavior problems go down, cooperation goes up, compassion goes up, and learning goes up. Last Christmas, I had from one of the people who came to the process community, was a teacher, I had 35 letters in an envelope from fourth grade students who had been utilizing this, thanking me for being a genius to invent this because everything turned around, that they loved people in the group. They were even making inwards, inroads with their families. Now, you'll see what's underneath this are very uh, profound concepts. <coughs> the idea that we acknowledge our appreciations. The idea that we recognize our differentness. The idea that we know we don't know everything and that there's lots more out there. The idea that new things are happening all the time, we need to be prepared for it. And the fact that life is constantly forming itself into new possibilities. So this was a temperature reading. Now, of course, what this does is it universalizes things. <coughs> In a group, I do this every 24 hours. What I say to people, we have its time. Uh, at the beginning of the day, where we go through the temperature reading, and unless there's a great emergency, we will not have to deal with any of this stuff until the next 24-hour period is there. It's been useful for families, which many of them do it every day, some once a week, whatever. <coughs> now let's look at it as also a tool for inside. What do I appreciate about me at this moment? What am I in touch with about the differences that I'm in touch with? What kind of puzzles am I facing myself with? What kind of new information is coming in? And what are my hopes and wishes for today and for tomorrow? And how can I use myself to get what I want for today? And so it's an instrument that you can use anywhere. Lockheed is using this now, I understand, with great results. And all the people that are not all, but many of them in the quality circles are using that. Because what happens is it's an instrument by which you become clear, human, and nurturing. So there's, there's several people are working on artistic ways of looking at that. But um, after a while, when you were with a group, you started out, and it takes a while for people to learn it, uh, learn what's happening. And then you can get by with a temperature reading of 10 minutes. At the beginning, it takes a little longer, especially with a new group. So <coughs> we have then the warm fuzzies. Here is, I'll call it A, this is B, the bugs, and C are the puzzles, and D is the new information, and E are the hopes and wishes. And I recommend for you that you make your own style of this thing and uh, give it to yourself, yourself every day and to whoever you live with at least once a week. <clears throat> because what will happen is all of the <coughs> taboos against commenting, which is one of the places where we, where we um, most of the time develop our negative things, will now be taken away because of any feeling that you have, you could comment on. I've had wonderful experiences with families in using this. When everybody's really free to comment, it just turns into a wonderful thing after the first couple of transactions. So the first time everybody shivers a little bit. Then after that, it becomes a light. It's probably one of the most successful tools that I've ever invented or developed. I don't know which way it was.